welcome everyone who is here this evening as we uh, have our uh, Monday Thursday service, a time of meditation and prayer. I welcome everyone at home who is able to watch us either uh, this evening, Thursday evening, or perhaps on Friday, um, if that suits you better. I just want to let you know that we haven't been able to celebrate uh, together like this on Monday, Thursday for the last two years. So this is a, a blessing that we can actually be here together this evening. Um, we have a Good Friday service that got sent out to all of you. If you did not get it, you can always give us a call in the office tomorrow. And for those who would like to, you're welcome to come and be with us in the sanctuary. We're going to watch our Good Friday service, which is the Stations of the Cross, an ecumenical service. We'll watch it together tomorrow morning here at 10.30. So, as is our custom, during this service, when the service is over, we will um, cover all the elements and uh, we will leave in silence. You can take a moment um, and, and in prayer. You don't have to get up and leave quickly. There won't be anybody directing you as to when to leave, but when you're ready, you can just quietly leave out the link door. And, uh, and then I will see you again when we come together again. So with that, we're going to start the service with When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. begin with a responsive call to worship. This is the day when Christ gathered with his disciples in an upper room. This is the day when Christ shared a meal as a sign of his great love. This is the day when Christ took a towel, washed the disciples' feet, and showed us how to serve others. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will watch and listen with open hearts filled with gratitude. And let us pray. Holy and mysterious God, as we gather around this table, and prepare to hear again the story of the Last Supper. Focus our attention. Gather us in worship with ears prepared to hear, minds prepared to learn, hands prepared to receive, and hearts prepared to love, even to the point of breaking. Draw us closer to Christ to receive his love and kindness, Draw us closer to you and to one another. In the name of Jesus, our servant, Lord. Amen.
reading is from Luke 22, starting in verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go, and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may meet the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. disappointment you feel? 
God knows you've loved them in a way that nobody else could. But it's not only that. The whole world doesn't seem to want you. Are you feeling alone, Jesus? Are those tears in your eyes and that sigh you breathe because you wish it could have been different? Are those tears of disappointment that are falling now? But you've always known it would be like this. Right from the beginning you knew this is how it would end. You've been faithful to God and faithful to them. You've said and done all the right things. But you were far too radical. They couldn't handle it. They would have had to change their ways completely, trusted you completely, and that would have meant turning everything on its head. But they weren't up to it. What a shame. It could have been so different. Don't give up though, Jesus. You can fight against the despondency. You know you are to die, but you also know about the new kingdom and the glory that awaits. There is still time left before the cross, still time to show them that, in the end, love will conquer evil, still time to convince them that death and separation are not all there is. Still time to tell them of another banquet and that they will share in it. But how? How to tell them that you are the beginning of something greater, that a new agreement between God and God's people has begun in you? How to tell them there's more, a new and different day, the bread, Jesus, the bread and the wine. Think hard, Jesus. Think how you might do it. This meal that you are about to share with them now is not just marking the Passover and looking back to the time God freed them from their slavery. Bless the bread, Jesus. It will become powerful in their memories and it will become more than bread. Say to them it stands for your body, the bread. It will mean you. Break the bread for them, and as they eat it, they'll remember you. They will become part of you, and you part of them. They will feel that, and it will make a difference to them. As they eat the bread, you will be real to them, and so they will know you are always with them. And the wine, Jesus, think about the wine. Pour it out for them, this red wine, like your blood, which tomorrow will flow as they put nails in your hands. Tell them the wine is your blood, the blood which sustains your life. They will drink the red wine and make the connection. And so they will be able to share in your life. They will become part of you and you part of them as they drink the red wine. And you will never die for them as long as they drink the red wine. That will be real for them, Jesus. You will be real. So think hard. Think hard about the bread and the wine and what it will mean. There are footsteps, a burst of laughter from the foot of the stairs. It must be Peter. He's always loud. And the voices of the others. Savor these last seconds alone, Jesus. From now on, it will be different. You must rouse yourself. Your friends are here. They will want you to be their host, and they will be your guests. This is your table. This is your time. 
They will eat and drink with you, and from now on, you will be real for them whenever they do that. Stir yourself, Jesus. It's time to get up. It's time now for bread and wine. And so, the disciples come through the door, smiling and chatting. They're eager to greet their friend, the one who has given them so much, loved them so much, and will continue to mean so much to them, as heaven's eternal grace is revealed to them in bread and wine. Shalom, peace be with you, Jesus, each one says, and he returns their greeting. Peace be with you, shalom, shalom. You can open your eyes. We'll do the same for each other now. Turn in your seat and look at your neighbor. Give them a wave, a nod, a smile with your eyes, and wish them peace also. Peace be with you. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. And so on that night long ago, this unique man named Jesus said and did the most surprising things. But ever since then, his friends has, have taken him at his word and have said and done the same thing. And because of this, they have understood his meaning and felt his presence and known his power operating in their lives. Tonight then, he is the host, and we are his guests. We who are his friends gather with him now. And in this sacred meal, Christ himself is with us in the bread and wine.
Holy One, creator of heaven and earth, you spoke and order emerged from chaos. Creation grew from the formless void and light broke into the darkness. You formed us in your image and called us to be your people. You spoke words of law and love to shape us into a community. Through the prophets, you called us to do justice and live in peace. In the fullness of time, your word became flesh and lived among us. In Jesus, we saw your full glory. He shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us. He healed the sick, ate and drank with outcasts, taught us to follow his ways, and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom. We give you thanks for Christ, the gift of your love and grace. Pour out your spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they become the body and blood of Christ for us. Nourished by them, may we become the body of Christ, serving you in the world you love. Praying in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for you. supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which has been shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and as often as you do, remember me. The blood of Christ shed for you.
us pray. Holy God, on this night Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment on our hearts and strengthen us in service, in unity, and in love for Christ's sake. Amen. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high 